How y'all doing today? Let's see you guys. Casey, you got a chance to play with Jimmy Toy last week at Kalash Camp. And it seemed like it was pretty fun for you. You know what? It was pretty good, except for that first run that came through there. That was him, too. You see? <laughs> but otherwise, no, it was a joy to have him have him back out there. And he kind of showed us what he'd been showing us all camp. So the guy's kind of special player in some ways. It's hard for offenses to, I mean, it's just from a number standpoint, you can't double really both Vita and Collision. Right. Teams are going to have to pick which guy they want to try to take away. Right. And, and having a one-two punch at defensive tackle, usually one-two punches are maybe an end, you know, right. tackle, but to have two guys that are different type players. Totally different. But but what, what does that do for, for you guys defensively? What can it do? Well, for us, we help because, you know, you have the power in Vita and you have the speed and quickness in Kalaja, then the speed of our end. So, you know, we hopefully we can create matchup problems, a matchup advantage for us is what we hope to gain from it. Third down was a challenge for you guys oh. this week. Um, but it's interesting because you guys also have, like, the league's top-ranked red zone defense. Just what was giving you so many challenges on, on third down and – how do you kind of correct that? And, and how do you how are you able to lean on on the success that you've had at defending the red zone? Well, the thing is, when you look at it, far as third down, and we looked at it, one we were we were not very high coming in after the game early in the season because they had so many third and shorts, which it makes it impossible. But the last week we had a lot of third and longs, which should be usually advantage defense, and it was it was always one thing or another. If I'm not mistaken, on the 27 yard touchdown, he threw a five yard pass that went for 27 yards. You know, you think you tackle him, at worst, you kick a field goal. It was it, the thing you look at it is one, everything was correctable. The bad thing, it wasn't just the rush, it wasn't just the coverage, it was a combination of everything. It was like a perfect storm, but just got to coach it better, play it better, and, and fix it. Are those perfect storms kind of inclined to happen after you have a bye week? Because you guys had such great momentum going into the bye, and then you had to take that break, maybe you didn't want to. Although it allowed you to heal from injuries, but, right. but can that just sometimes happen? communication issues, things like that. No, those things really shouldn't happen. That's the thing we looked at, and that's the thing we're harking on this week. They shouldn't happen. Good defenses, you, when you have the offense at your advantage, you should stop them in those situations. And we just didn't play them well. We didn't coach it well. We didn't play it well. It was all the way. We just got to fix it and move forward. Casey, you're, you guys are committed to really playing four outside linebackers, and uh, you know, including Anthony <clears throat> Selfie and Yaya. Right. What have you seen from Yaya's development? This year. He's, he's getting a lot of on the job training and, right. and, and uh, against a running team like the Falcons, they're a pretty good job setting the edge. Yeah, it's right. right. Well, the thing with him is uh, like when we said early in the year, we were playing a lot of young guys coming into the season, but they were talented. They were young, but they were talented. And he's one of them. This guy really does a great job setting the edge. And we put a lot on their plates, too, you know, in our system to start with. And the thing is just watching his growth, like Kalaja, Izzy, a lot of our young players are really stepping in and finding roles for themselves that are really going to help us going forward. He's a little bit of a late bloomer at Louisville in terms of his pass rushing really sacks. How rapid or slow has, has that development been with you guys in terms of this pass rushing? The thing is, we're thinking he's one of our better rushers now, but the thing is, is finding the role for him because right now, Joe and Shaq, you like them on the field. And then when Kalaja back now, Vita, you know, where where do you put him? You know, he's a good inside rusher, as in there. He can wear a lot of hats for. So as it go, keep going forward, as we know, we're going to need everybody. So the thing is, we know we got him, and right now he's a luxury, but he's definitely, definitely made strides in the rush. Coach Rogers, what did you see against the Lions that prevented you guys from getting takeaways, and how do you correct that this week? The problem with them, one, they were a good football team, and usually good football teams don't turn it over, and they did a good job of taking care of the ball, and we got to make a stronger emphasis to get it because when we're successful, we create turnover. So my hat goes off to them. They really took care of the ball, and they didn't really put themselves in any bad situations for us to get the ball. One silver lining you can take away from the Lions game is limiting the run game. But going up against the Falcons, you have B. John Robinson and Tyler Algier, you hope to contain 
What can you say about the defense's game plan in that regard, trying to stop them? If we don't stop the run, we're not winning. I can t tell you that they are they are really a two-headed monster. And the last time we played Atlanta, we didn't really do a good job stopping the run either. So they are they're the team with Atlanta with the extra pieces that they added and their commitment to the running game make them very viable because then you also throw in the quarterback run game element that they have and then you add in a different receiving element and then the last couple of times we played them we've always missed pits so now you have pits along with london they just create problems for us usually when you have a team that has one featured tight end whether it's hawkinson or etc the falcons and you look john smith has a lot of experience in arthur smith's system and he's actually slightly more productive than Yes, sir. Great question. That's what we're spending a lot of time on. It's the personnel because they have 12 that could look so many different ways. You got 12 with 85 in there, and then you got 12 with 8 in there. 8 and 81 is going to look different than 12 with 8 and 85, and then 13 personnel. They got three of them out there, and it's just posed so many problems because if you go big on them, then they open up the set. You could have problems. You go small, now you, how are you going to stop the run? The, what they're doing schematically, really, and with their personnel, poses a lot of problems, which we're trying to answer now. Can you speak to the play of Levante David? I know it wasn't the outcome you guys wanted this past Sunday against the Lions, but it just seemed like he had a, just a brilliant game. He really is. Levante is the best thing to say. He's the same guy every day since we walked in the door here. You know, he's like a bell cow captain for us. You know, he doesn't say a lot, but when he says something, everybody listens to him and they know he's coming to the game with us. I can't say enough about him. You know, just being around him since we've been here, he's been a joy to coach and he's been the same guy every day. Just a great player and great person, just a total pro. What was the most impressive thing that you saw for him? Uh, just the, the the best thing is the ability, one, the play he made on LaPorta on the seven cut, which, you know, he was lighting people up. Then to come back a couple of plays later and make a sack on a blitz, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's a lot. Going back to um, rush defense, just looking at your group this year and what's your assessment of what they've been able to do against the run? Well, you know, uh, the thing is we had to try to make an emphasis to get back to do that because that's been our kind of calling card, try to make teams one-dimensional, then tee off them in the past. So right now we're going to have to continue to try to stop the run, but we're doing it differently. Before we've been real big up front, real big and strong. Now we got a big guy and we got a little guy and we got a fast guy. So it's just the challenges of doing it differently. We still The job still has to be done, but we got to do it differently. Coach Bulls talked about some communication breakdowns and I guess those will happen but, no doubt. but for a group that's been mostly together uh, how much you know do you guys just does it start in practice like where do they clean that up to where they're just a hundred percent well, you, the thing is, just, it really starts in practice. Like you say, just communicate. It's funny, and Coach makes the point all the time. You guys talk all the time and joke around in the, in the locker room, but then you get on the field and your mom's the word. We just got to – and then you mix in the fact we do have some young players in now, and the young players, I found that they don't really know, they don't really talk. That's anybody. If you're really confident in something, oh, you can't wait to talk. If you ain't real sure, yeah. Then mom's the word, so we just got to go through that growing process and hey, make sure everybody's on the same page and give us a fighting chance. All right, anything else? Yeah, I have one more for you real quick. Uh, sure. Javosky, down the street, you missed some time with that hamstring right. injury. You know, kind of relegated to, to special teams right. just with you know, Levante and the dead man. But what have you seen from him coming back from that injury, playing special teams, and his growth and development? He's got a high football IQ that seems to be a great fit for this team. Really, guys, that's another one of those young guys that we were very excited about. And then, you know, his coverage skills and, you know, he's just in a tough situation or creates a challenge for us to get him on the field because you don't want Vontae Devin off the field. So in order to get him on the field, who are you taking off? And right now, you don't want to take off a rusher. You don't want to take off corner. So it's just a good problem to have right now. But he has really made strides, picked up the system very well. And we hate that, you know, he got nicked up early because we he poses a problem for us because we got to find a way to get him on the field. Thank you. You guys have a good day.